So you know how to measure. Almost everybody knows how to measure. You pick that up along the way in life. It's one of those things. Somebody says, go measure how long this is. You take a ruler, you go measure it. What we want to do now is we want to make your measurements better. And in order to do that, you have to understand something very important about the instruments that you're using. There is a point at which those instruments become uncertain. Now, most of the people ignore that when they make their measurements. You, you want to find out what the temperature is outside. You go read a thermometer. You say, oh, it's, it's about 70 degrees. But you don't stop to think, well, is it really exactly 70 degrees? How much uncertainty is dependent in some way on the instruments that you're using? And so we need to take a look at how do we properly read these instruments. So the first thing you have to understand is when we properly read instruments, you have to include in your measurement all of the digits in the, in the measurement that you know for sure. And that's basically going to be based on the lines, what we call graduations, on the instrument itself. So you're going to look at those lines and you're going to be able to figure out uh, which digits in your measurement, what your measurement looks like, and which digits are actually certain. Everybody does that. That's what you learn how to do first. You say, oh, it's got lines. Okay, so I'll just measure and figure out where the lines are. But what happens if it's between the lines? See, we can get a better measurement if we have smaller distances between the lines, but we have to talk about between the lines. Most people ignore that entirely, and you're not allowed to ignore the the section between the lines, because that's the uncertainty of a measurement. Okay, When you read an instrument, you have to take into account the space between the lines. That means that if your measurement happens in between two of the lines that are actually drawn on that instrument, you're going to have to estimate. Okay, So this is called the uncertain part of the measurement. It's important, it's absolutely important to use it when you make a measurement, but it varies. It depends on who actually makes the measurement. You may look at your measurement and you may say, oh, this looks like it's between two lines here. I'm going to estimate that at 0.5. Somebody else might look at it and say, oh, no, it's 0.7. You're both right. Okay, But you have to put that in there, even though it's uncertain. Now, there's a limit. You can't make up decimal places in your measurement if you don't have at least some lines to go on. And so the rule is this, for uncertainty, the rule is only one decimal place in the space. And we're going to have to take a look at some of the different types of measurements we have in order to really understand this. So let's take a look at measuring volume. So we know when we're measuring volume we're going to use a graduated cylinder. And you've already used a graduated cylinder, so you sort of know the process. A graduated cylinder is called a graduated cylinder because it has lines along the side. So here's a little close-up of a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. We've got some water in there. The first thing you'll notice is that the water makes sort of a bowl shape, a cupped shape. And that's called a meniscus. And when you read a graduated cylinder, you are going to read from the bottom of the meniscus. Now, it's very important that you put your graduated cylinder on a flat surface so that you can allow this meniscus to be in the position that it needs to be in. And you're going to sight line, try to figure out where the bottom of that meniscus is. In some cases like this, we're looking at it very closely, it's pretty easy to figure out where the bottom of that meniscus is. It's right here. Now, how do we measure that? Well, what do we know for certain? about this volume measurement. This is measured in milliliters. You see milliliters up at the top. And we know that it's at least 9. It's at least 9 milliliters. It's not 10 milliliters yet, because we haven't gotten up to the 10 line. But we have at least 9 milliliters. And then we have this, these lines in between the 9 and the 10. And there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lines. So that means that each of those lines is about 2 tenths, or 1 fifth, of a milliliter. We know for sure that the water is taking up at least two of those lines, a little bit more than two of those lines, but not three. And so that water is 9.2.4. It's at least 9.4. But it's not 9.6. It's between 9.4 and 9.6. Now, we have to estimate in between the lines. Well, this is easy. What's between 9.4 and 9.6? 9.5. We have to call this 9.5 because 
that's where the measurement lies. It's between those two. Now, depending on where we put our measurement and depending on how small the lines are, we're going to vary that just a little bit. Okay. It is important to notice what happens when our meniscus seems to be touching right on the line. What do we do then? Here's an example. Another graduated cylinder filled with some water. There's your meniscus. And this meniscus, the bottom of it, looks like it's right on that line. Well, which, which line is that? Well, it's the 21 is above the 22, but we can just sort of imagine that we're reading it upside down. Uh, 21, and it's 1, 2, 3, 3 tenths of a milliliter between 21 and 22. So it's 21.3 at least. But now we have to estimate in between the lines. And the rule is you estimate one more decimal place than the smallest lines in your instrument. The smallest lines in this instrument are tenths of a milliliter. So we have to estimate to the hundredths place. But this meniscus seems to be right on the 3 tenths line after 21 but we have to estimate the hundredths. Well, there are no hundredths, okay? So we put a zero. We say this is 21.30 milliliters. What's important is that we added an extra digit to account for the space between the lines. And even though there's no space between these lines that we need to estimate, we're going to throw it in there anyway. The rule is go one extra decimal place than the smallest lines in your measurement. All right, what about mass? Let's take a look at measuring mass. Well, here's a fairly familiar sight. These are three beams of a triple beam balance. Uh, we can't see what's on the balance pan. Could be anything, really. But we can see where the sliders are. And now we need to take and measure and figure out what our measurement's going to be. So what are we certain of? Well, we're certain that there's at least 100 grams. That 100 gram slider is locked into position at the 100 point. There's also 60 on the 10 slider, so we've got at least 160 grams. And the final slider, the one down in the front, uh, it's at least 3 grams, so it's 163 grams. And it's not quite 164, it's before that, so let's figure out what our smallest lines are. Our smallest lines are tenths of a gram. There are 10 lines in between the 3 and the 4. So how many lines do we know for sure? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a little hard to see where in relation to the seven our little pointer is at, but it's at least 163.6. And the rule is, if the smallest lines are tenths, we have to go to hundredths. And so we're going to decide and estimate um, where in the hundredths that little pointer is pointing. Some of you might think it's pointing directly at number seven, at the seventh line. So you would say maybe that there it's right on seven, it would be 163.7 and no hundredths, 0 0.70. Some of you may think, well, that looks just a little bit before the seven. And so I'm going to call this 163.68. And some may say, no, it's even closer to the line than 0.68. So we're going to call it 163.69. All of those are valid measurements. All of those are correct. The most important thing is that you estimated the space between the lines. And even if you thought that it was right on a line, you still made the estimation. So you have to have two decimal places here in your measurement because we need to estimate to the hundredths. How about if we want to measure the distance from point A to point B? We're going to measure length. So here's a centimeter ruler. The arrow indicates where our measurement is going to occur. If we're measuring in centimeters, what do we know for certain? We know that this measurement is at least one centimeter. It's not two. It hasn't reached the two yet. So it's at least one. And then we have these little lines. Our smallest lines here are tenths of centimeters. Millimeters, but still tenths of centimeters. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's at least 1.9 centimeters. It is not 2.0. It is 1.9. And now we have to estimate. Some people may see that as about 1.94. Others may see it as 1.95. You might even think 1.93. All of those are correct as long as you make sure that you estimate that final digit.
in the space between the lines. So our smallest lines here are tenths of a centimeter. We must estimate the hundredths, and that is part of the measurement. What about measuring temperature? So here's a little section of a thermometer, and we're going to be reading on the right-hand scale, which is the Celsius scale, and the left hand is the Fahrenheit scale. We don't really use the Fahrenheit scale in chemistry. We use the Celsius scale. So we're looking on the right-hand side here, and what do we know for sure? We know it's at least 60 degrees. We also know that there are 10 lines between 60 and 70, so that means that each line is 1 degree. Now most people would read this and say, oh, it's 65 degrees. See, it's right on there. But we know that we have to estimate the space between the lines. Now you may look at this and say, no, it's dead on the 65 line. Well, fine, that's, that's fine. Call it 65, but call it 65.0. It is no tenths. It's not in the space where the tenths are. But some of you might look at this and say, oh, it looks like it's just a shade below the 65 line. So that means that what's certain is now 64, maybe 64.9 degrees. Again, you have to go one more decimal place than the smallest lines on the measurement. And since on this one, in the Celsius scale, the smallest line is a degree, you have to go to the tenths of a degree. So now that you understand a little bit about how to use these instruments, the next time you go to make a measurement in lab, I want you to be very aware of the degree of accuracy. In other words, how small those lines are. And then remember the rule, you're going to go one decimal place further in your measurement than the smallest lines you have. So if something is graduated and the smallest line represents a milliliter, then your measurement has to include a tenth of a milliliter, tenths of milliliters. And you're going to have to guess or estimate how many tenths that is, because there isn't going to be a line to help you. You're going to guess how far between the lines it is. But that part of the measurement is absolutely crucial. So you'll have a chance to practice this in class several times. Anytime you do a measurement, be very aware of the accuracy of your instrument.